Good afternoon and welcome to the Leahona Light. What can I say? We are chugging right along into uh, the Isaiah territory. The title of this episode is called Lord Alone Exalted. Okay? Now, we're covering uh, Second Nephi, chapters 11 and 12. We're probably going to be covering more chapter 12 because it has a little bit more, shall we say, meat on the bone. <laughs> some some, some uh, good stuff. But there is um, a few verses in chapter 11 that we can't omit. This is part of the last of Jacob's wisdom. Before uh, he translates everything over from Isaiah. Chapter 11, verses 4 and 5. Behold, my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ. For for this end hath the law of Moses been given, and all things which have been given of God from the beginning of the world unto man are the typifying of him. Verse 5, And also my soul delighteth in the covenants of the Lord, which he hath made to our fathers. Yea, my soul delighteth in his grace, and in his justice, and power, and mercy, in the great and eternal plan of deliverance from death. Okay, before we go into uh, 2 Nephi 12, which is really a uh, transliteration of Isaiah chapter 2, I want to go and get a little background here. What that means in translation is the law of Moses is only meant to be a schoolmaster. It typifies uh, Christ. But once Christ was crucified on the cross, the law of Moses was crucified with him, made dead, null, and void. And with his resurrection, the higher law of Christ, which is demonstrated in the Sermon on the Mount in the Bible and the Sermon in the Rubble in the Book of Mormon. Okay, who knows? Maybe maybe someday we'll go we'll go through that. Uh, we'll go through those, but we're uh, just one thing at a time. Okay. We now go into chapter 12, which is a kind of a re-indition, re-translation of Isaiah chapter 2, and we're going to go we're going to do um, besides the key verses, there is there is a verse before the, the main first verse. In verse 3, I might as well read. I kind of omitted it. In verse 3, in 2 Nephi 12, verse 3 says, And many people shall say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nations. Neither shall they learn war any more. 
um, verse 5. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Yea, come, for ye have all gone astray, every one to, in, in a, to his wicked ways. Verse 6. Therefore, O Lord, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be uh, replenished from the east and hearken unto soothsayers. You know, I didn't know what that word means. Pretty much what soothsayers is, basically, it's like sorcery. You know? Hearken unto soothsayers, like the Philistines. And they please themselves in the children of strangers. Verse 7. Their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. The land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Verse 8. Their land is also full of idols. The worship the work of their own hands. That which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth not down. And the great man humbleth himself not. Therefore, forgive him not. Okay, that's for us. This four through nine. Doesn't that describe in some ways what we're going through today? In this country, we are blessed with so much. I know we hear the stories, you know, hyperinflation and all that stuff, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not deaf to those stories. I'm attuned to the news. A man that's into public affairs. But I also know that we as Americans, we're greatly blessed. But we've taken God out of the equation. We've taken God out of the equation. Much like, uh, much like ancient Israel. You know? Isaiah... It's not just speaking of ancient Israel. I also think he's thinking, he's speaking prophetically about really and truthfully um, our day. Now, we're going to go down to verses 14 through 19. Verse 14. And upon all, all the high mountains and upon all the hills and upon all the nations which are lifted up, and upon every people, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of the sea, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the, uh, verse 17, okay, this is powerful. And the loftiness of men shall be bowed down, and the hardiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. That's quite a bit to, to chew on. Folks, we're in the last days. It's time for people to be humbled. It's time for people to stand up and be counted. You know, I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. Isaiah sees it. I see it. He's comparing all those things in the cedars of, 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 of Lebanon. You think about all the things that we take for granted. It's cell phones. You know, and, <laughs> and all the glitz and glory and, and good and bad that come from them. Sometimes I feel like we take them for granted, and, and that's what I use mostly 
uh, to podcasts is, is cell phones. Sometimes I use my computer, but cell phone technology right now is a little bit more um, advanced. But even with all the technology and all the bells and whistles we had, you know, say you say say you have some some of the best. Okay, you have you have this nice two story house with a basement, all the bells and whistles you could possibly have. And you have your favorite car or cars. People are working and, and do what you say. You have all these fancy cars. You have a private jet. You have all these things. But you discount faith in God. And you're lifted up in pride. And you treat people with contempt. Let me tell you something. That happens. It's kind of like the old Johnny Cash song. Sooner or later, God will put you down. God will shut you down. I know this sounds kind of strange, but I remember two and a half years ago, April of 2019, I honestly think that God shut me down for a time. Sometimes I think it's because of arrogance. I guess the Lord to keep me humble. And so, sometimes He has to give me that reality check. January 2018. I was bursting with pride. So I went, oh, I'm fine. And I fell and broke my leg. God humbled me. You can't pretend to have any self-importance before God. Because we, 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 we are in rags before Him. He's the one that gave us life. We, we can't even take a breath. Without even him giving it to, to, to us. Okay, so that's that's something for you to think about. Now, verse 18. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. Verse 19. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks. And into the caves of the earth. For the fear of the Lord shall come upon them. And the glory of his majesty shall smite them. When he ariseth to, to shake terribly the earth. That's a lot to think about. That is a lot to think about. You know, when I just originally designed Leah Home of Light, I really didn't realize what all was in, involved. I really didn't. I didn't know what they would become a scripture study for me. Find the perfect song for your video in five seconds. Go to Now I hope you've enjoyed listening to Leah on the Light. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, become a part of the Leah on the Light family. This is Jimi Hendrix saying until next time. Take care. And God bless you.